Why do so many Christians not embrace the commonly held view about our origins, specifically evolution? Well, I could try to cram into just a few minutes uh, an argument against the doctrine of evolution, uh, but I don't think that's the best use of our time. I think such arguments can be made, though perhaps not in five minutes. Uh, if you're interested in reading such an argument, I would commend to your reading the little book Darwin on Trial, written by Phil Johnson. Phil Johnson was, uh, for most of his career, professor at uh, the Bolt Law School, which is connected to the University of California at Berkeley. A uh, highly respected man uh, who wrote an excellent little book on this theme. But my goal instead is to help the unbeliever or uh, the, the professing Christian who does embrace evolution to understand why these crazy Christians don't seem to want to get with the program. And the short and simple answer is it's because Christians believe the Bible. We believe the Bible to be the word of God. Now, there are lots of people who are willing to use that kind of language and say, yes, the Bible is the Word of God, or, or I understand why someone would think the, word, the Bible is the Word of God, but it's not to be taken literally. Hmm, well, it's not to be taken literally if by literal we mean that uh, everything is supposed to be is presented as straight history that there's no metaphor there's no poetry there's no symbolism or simile of course there is every christian in the world when they read the bible and it says that god has eyes that roam to and fro across the earth not a one of us has ever affirmed that there are these giant eyeballs with these long uh, giant legs and that god runs across the globe like a hamster on a, a hamster wheel of course not to understand and interpret the Bible rightly, you have to interpret poetry as poetry, history as history, simile as simile. Uh, they're not the same thing, but generally speaking, they have uh, sort of hints to can tell us what's what. Well, there are those who will argue that the account of the creation, what we have in the book of Genesis, looks like poetry. And in some ways, I'm willing to concede that. But it's also presented as historical fact. Now, the Christian could be wrong. The Bible could be false. We could be misunderstanding the Bible. Absolutely. But it's not just stubbornness. It's not just fear. It's, hey, this is what the Bible says. And we're supposed to believe what the Bible says. And in fact, all of God's people have believed what the Bible says for as long as the Bible's been around. The funny thing is that it's on the other side, it's on the naturalistic side, where there's been wild fluctuations about what people believe. There was a time when the leading science insisted that we all had to believe in the fact of spontaneous generation, that life just popped out of nowhere. And they believed this because when meat would begin to rot, all of a sudden there would be bugs everywhere. But someone had the brilliant idea of putting some meat uh, in a, essentially a vacuum, and lo and behold, there were no bugs. And they, they refuted with the scientific method that doctrine of spontaneous regeneration. But then they snuck it back in. Back at the creation, back at the beginning of life. I, I don't have the faith to believe that. What, what we have as scientists trying to get us to embrace evolution is uh, not science. It's something that's not repeatable. It's something that's not doesn't follow a set of laws. In fact, when you talk about uh, the things that supposedly happened at the beginning of time, you find that well, they're rather magical. And they stretch my imagination beyond all recognition. Again, I'm not saying that it's impossible for the Christian to be wrong. Of course we could be wrong. But don't blame us for believing something different than what 
is granted the consensus among scientists, but scientists have had consensuses that have been wrong a million times. In my own lifetime, we had scientists telling us, you got to put the baby to sleep on its back. And then telling us, no, you got to put the baby to sleep on its stomach. Then tell us, no, you got to put the baby to sleep on its side. We have doctors or scientists rather who, t who tell us, uh, you can't eat eggs. They're bad for you. You got to eat eggs. They're good for you. You can't eat oatmeal. It's bad for you. You got to eat oatmeal. It's good for you. You can't have carbs. You got to have carbs. It just never ends. This idea that science has arrived is unscientific and, frankly, fundamentalistic. So let's all practice a little bit of humility and let's all acknowledge that it's possible we could be wrong. And let's come together and talk about what we believe and why we believe it.